grew up that orthodoxy the dominant would be the dominant move of modern Jews as distinct from the conservative reform. I mean, we studied Yeshiva University used to be envious of those who came out of the Jewish Theological Seminary and we looked at Orthodox synagogues and we saw the conservative synagogue and the reform. We were schleps, like a little shtibel. Our salaries are, were much lower. The shoes were not impressive. I mean, it, it was very attractive to, to join the conservative movement. Very attractive. Shoes having pools and gyms. I mean, what did the Orthodox shul had a small bait midrash, you know what I mean? I mean, there, there was, whoo, they were very, and if I, that's, that was the direction. Success was to go to the Jewish Theological Seminary. To go to reform is, who knows what, that's already was not such a great option. That's already, that's too far. But the conservative was like enough. It had a little traditionalism, so why not? So it can make a good living. Who would think? that the dominant, that the movement that is going through the greatest crisis as to its own identity and future is the conservative movement. I speak to Ani Eisen in terms of the seminary. They're depressed. When you go and look at a Lakewood Yeshiva, which was Europe in its best, in Lakewood, and that Lithuanian giant produced Talmidim, who then established kolels across America. What's a kolel? You know, that's, that, that term even has become an accepted term in cultures. The kolel, did you, have you studied the kolel yet? The kolel has taken over Jewish education in cities, where at one time there was a rapprochement between Orthodox conservative reforms to form a, a united type of day school or the Kolel came and said, no, keep the conservative reform out. And they destroyed a school in Phoenix, which the rabbis worked 20, 30 years to create. Suddenly, I mean, that type of orthodoxy, you know, Bali Tshuva and all that, just simply, I mean, irrationality began to flow. You see American kids who went to university suddenly returned from Israel with a bid in payers. And they're going, one person told me, a very modern person, where are you going after you for your honeymoon? He says, I'm going to Uman. I said, what are you going to do in Uman? He says, don't you know what is in Uman? The brass of the Braslov Rebbe, Nachman of Braslov. So we're going to visit his kever. <laughs> Would you imagine young people then wanting to go to a honeymoon to the Bratzla Rebbe or to the Gerach Sidim. I mean, you find people suddenly having, my niece has 18 children, Kanaina Hava. And any one of my brother's family, if it's less than 10 and 11, they apologize. Now, can you have pictured that type of world in the 20s? The wilder you are, the more right-wing you are, the more successful you are. I mean, what was Lubavitch's great achievement? They gave latkes out on Hanukkah in the Chavis, I don't know, Shmura Matzahs on Pesach. And they danced with fervor and they were sincere. So suddenly the new truth was sincerity and dedication, not the content. Who ever studied the theology of Chabad? It's deeply, deeply, primitively racist in many levels, mystical and Israel dominated by the Cookians, the Kukos. I mean, you read his books, you don't understand what he's talking about most of the time. They live in mystic worlds and mystic languages and the less intelligible on the contrary, the more attractive it has become. You just have to learn when shuckling, and you won. And if you shuckle longer, then you really won. 
they clock a person's from kite by how long his shimon esra takes. So I mean that's, oh I mean food, badats and bagats and all that nonsense. All, the, the whole mania with kashrut and all that. It became an obsessive religion. Now where was that? There was no OU in the 20s. There was no Mahadran, Sheba Mahadran, Sheba Mahadran. I say the only reason why the Mashiach has not come because he wouldn't have a kosher place to eat in. Because wherever he'd go, the, there would be a group of chassidim who would say it's treif. So he would, he'd have to fight that whole battle. I mean, you see, the heresies in the Middle Ages was modernity. Today it's not modernity which is the challenge, the Haskalah, that's not what the problem is. The problem is that we've given up on a rational capacity of man to build a human life. We've given up on reason, the greatest treasure that human beings have.